a little bit about myself and what we do. Uh, and then I'll preach another time. We'll see. Yeah, but I'll, 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 I'll have a little message here too. But we'll see, okay? Um, you got to understand that, um, that there are some basic, very, very basic things I want to explain. Someone came to me with a gospel. That's powerful. Someone explained the cross to me. We could stop right there. That's amazing. Someone came to me and explained the gospel story. Took time. Explained about the good God that came in human flesh. And someone explained to me what it meant when these nails went through his hands and his feet. and Told me about the power of the blood. Told me about the resurrection. Isn't it? Someone told me the gospel story. And... Um, if there hadn't been someone that took that time, I wouldn't have been standing here, right? I, 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 I wouldn't have been a husband today. I would probably have been a crackhead or dead already. But I'm a husband. Hallelujah. I'm a, I'm a father. That's mighty. I raise kids. Huh? I'm sober. It's beautiful. I don't have a hangover today. I didn't wake up next to a blonde. I didn't know, praise God. Are you getting this? Yeah. The gospel is amazing. The gospel transforms an individual, but also an entire society. That's the first thing that the Holy Spirit wanted me to say to you. And then I also want to say that don't forget that it is the Holy Spirit that transforms and saves. Huh? Not logic, not the reasoning. What does Paul say? He says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Romans chapter 1, 16. Uh, but he also says in 1 Corinthians that it was not with eloquence or superior wisdom. I came to you. No, I came to you in weakness and with much trembling. And I didn't want to persuade you with words. But I wanted to come to you with a demonstration of the Spirit and His power, right? So that your faith would not rest upon human wisdom, but upon the power of God. And I think that this is almost getting lost in Western society and Western churches today. That it is the power of God that transforms people. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Holy Ghost man. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I, I believe in, in all these supernatural things that the, gospels, that the Gospels are telling us about. Uh, and we've seen miracles. All me and Peter could, could tell you now the whole night. But I remember uh, as a little boy, I was hungry for something that I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. And I still remember when I was 14, 14 or 15, 15 maybe, my brother had just been, my brother had just come to be a Christian, 15 I must have been. And he came to this house at the west coast in Sweden. I tell the story, the story short now. They were smoking a lot of pot in that house. There were stuff happening in that house that we all knew about. They would blow a cold wind through the house in the middle of the night. We were all waking up at the same time. You know, this type of stuff. There would be stuff happening in that house. We said it, there were ghosts. There were, we, we called it all kinds of things. But I would woke up and I, I would wake up two o'clock, and I, I would just know now there's someone in the room. And I would walk into my brother's room. He had just come from a Christian conference. He was just saved, and he was singing a worship song. And my brother, he couldn't sing. No, no. He's a pastor now since 25 years, but he sings horribly. <laughs> Not like your pastor here. I love him so much, but he should keep to preaching, you know. <laughs> My dear, dear brother, I hope you hear this, uh, uh, this CD one day. But, but he, he was singing. And he said to me, I can teach you this song. And he taught me a simple worship song can't even it is it is a Swedish one it wouldn't relate to you but it's one of these eternity songs just the two two sentences 
and he, when I sang that song, something filled my chest and my, and my entire being. But every time I stopped singing, it vanished like, like smoke. But when I sang that song, I felt peace. It became a mantra to me, a feel-good mantra. Can I tell it just the way I viewed it at that time? This was my feel-good mantra. Every time, well, you know, if a girlfriend broke up with me or if I'd been beaten up or whatever had happened, you know, I would start to sing this song. And when I sang it, this abstract element, huh? that you and me know is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, but I didn't know this religious abstract energy would fill me, drive away the fear for a little while. But then as soon as I stopped singing, it vanished. And I met this again and again, and I didn't know what it was. And this is what people are hungry for here in Phoenix and everywhere, the Holy Spirit. I would sit next to this girl in the bus. I always teased her she was a christian girl she was out of my league i couldn't ask her out she was this church choir girl but i would sit next to her and and i would tease her and every time when i said you know pervert stuff or, or i was very very filthy with my words she would always put her hair out of her face i still remember put them behind her ear and then she, she would start to preach to me with a finger like this Mm -hmm. probably her mom had said home you preach to that guy because I was harassing her every day you know but when she did that something came out of her I still remember it it was like someone sprinkled hot water in my face and then when she would speak I would feel something go into me <sighs> it was coming out of her like this puffing out and I would walk off the bus and I would I wanted to hold it, but it vanished. Don't take the Holy Spirit for granted. Here in America, you grew up in church cultures. Don't take the Holy Spirit for granted. Oh, I was so hungry for it. And then I remember that night when that guy kept on preaching the gospel, telling me the gospel. And finally he says, can I pray? Yeah. I didn't know what to answer. I said, yeah, I know. It's good if you pray. He starts to pray, and I thought he was going to pray a, an Ave Maria or a Pater Noster, you know. But he was a crazy Holy Ghost man. So he started screaming in tongues and walking back and forth in the room, and I was thinking, seriously? <laughs> uh, wow. You're really praying. And then this thing came again. Oh, I want to tell you. The gospel needs to be preached, right? And the Holy Ghost needs to penetrate. And uh, finally, I, I, I felt so bad. I had to run out of the room. I felt, I, I felt like a low creep. I felt filthy. And I didn't understand at that time that it was the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, you know, as the Bible says, you know, he, he, he comes with what? He comes with judgment. He comes, you know, he, 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 cuts, us in, he cuts, cuts, cuts us in our hearts, isn't it? And he comes with righteousness and he brings out and he exposes. And I, and I felt I wanted to run out the room. But then he grabbed me. Mm. He was a big fellow. You know, biceps like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> And he took me and he said, say Jesus and everything will be all right. And I screamed, let me go. <laughs> Are you crazy? And he held me. He held me, I'm not letting you go until you pray to Jesus. So I thought to myself, I better pray a prayer quick. So I prayed a prayer. And it was the Santa Claus list. You've all prayed it, right? You know, God help mama. <laughs> And then, God, if you could, you know, give me a PlayStation 2 or what other kids pray, you know. <laughs> and then if you could, and I prayed my list. And then I said, amen. And then he says, are you finished? What do you mean? I just prayed. No, are you finished? You have to pray for forgiveness for your sins. And then I freaked out again. I haven't done anything. 
I'm the victim. Have you heard that story? Come on now, let me talk about this for a while. I'm the victim. Isn't that what I've been? Yeah. I've, you know, some have been hiding about that their entire lives. They are victims. And I'll tell you something about that quick. Just very quick. If someone puts a diaper on your desk, full of crap. <laughs> he puts a diaper on your desk, on your office desk, right? You can say, take it away, this is not mine. But if it's still there three days from now, it has become yours. <laughs> Just, you know, great revelation, huh? And if it's there two weeks from now, it's definitely yours. What a pig are you? I'm not removing that diaper. So you see, we can't remain the victims our entire lives, even if we've been victimized, isn't it? We have to get that stuff out. Yeah. So I tried then after a while because he was strong and he was holding me and he was squeezing me. So I prayed, Jesus, forgive me. And he said, pray from your heart. And I did, and after a while. And then when I did, that thing happened. That we want the whole world to get that. Huh? I never forget it. It was like someone was taking a bucket with hot water, threw it right into my chest. And that thing that had vanished like smoke before became permanent. It was there. And it bubbled up from within. It was a hot spring. It was a geyser. It was something shooting up inside of me. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. You see, if you get someone really saved, you don't have to flirt with that someone. Let me say something now here in America. Is this okay? Huh? You see, we don't have to convince people with cookies to come to church. If they have really experienced the gospel and the Holy Spirit, they have a geyser within, a hot spring. They will come back. So I, uh, I started praying uncontrollably. Yeah. And he said, mm -hmm. you got it. You got it, man. And he walked out and he locked the church from the outside. That's what we call 100% follow-up. <laughs> you lock in the just save. That's what you do. Had to open up that door with a screwdriver that night, you know. I had some experience. I got out. But from that night, I was saved. Saved. I came home to mama's apartment. Huh? Can't you see I'm religious now? I thought that was a positive word, you know? <laughs> Can't you see I'm, I'm, I'm beaming? Can't you see I'm radiating? Stood there. There were wine bottles. You know that sticky floor? Have you been in that sticky, sticky apartment? Huh? And then, and, then, and then she's standing there with her hair all directions in a Japanese robe. Can you see this? We need some very, very strong coffee. And then her boyfriend comes out. It's that guy, you know, that's, he was a hippie when it was the hippie era, but he smoked so much pot he never realized the hippie era was over. So he just kept on being, you know. He comes out naked. Can you see him? Long hair, scratches him. And he says to me, what are you smoking? Come into the kitchen, I'll tell you. Okay, I, I, I'm not here to make jokes. There are some things I want to say, okay? There are some things that I want to explain when I will tell the very heart of our ministry. We believe the gospel is the right, okay? That's a human right. And it doesn't belong just to the, to the Western Europeans or the Americans or the Australians. It is a human. It is not a, the gospel is not a church culture. That's not what we are exporting. We are exporting the power to transformation of our whole society, isn't it? We don't want, we don't want, want them necessarily to sing our songs. That's not the goal. Huh? Or wear the same clothes we are wearing or do the same stuff. We, we want to export the gospel. Because the gospel about the cross, the resurrection, the blood, and the power of the Holy Spirit sets people free. Have you got that? 
Okay, my friends, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to bring you there now, slowly by slowly, to what is the heart of our ministry. The Holy Spirit came upon me and my girlfriend, Maria. She's my wife now, but she's been my sweetheart for 21 years, 22 years. And um, he, he came upon us powerfully. And we started to see visions. And we had no experience, no cross-culture experience. Are you there? Not, no missionary training. But we wanted to go to the people groups that have never, ever heard the gospel. And we didn't know that you could go to churches to raise money for that. you got to understand. That was not in our concept. We were Europeans. We are from non-Christian background. So I was welding at the time. So I, I welded, I did double shifts and we saved. And we did all kinds of things. We sold stuff and we saved money. And we would sit at the, at the kitchen table in my little flat and pray and cry for God to show us groups that had never heard the gospel. And then finally we had saved up 40,000 Swedish, which is like $6,000. It was a huge amount of money for us. We saved it to be able to go. And we purchased a ticket to, to go to Kenya in East Africa. That was the first place we went to. Now we have conducted 70 of these festivals. And we have planted 650 churches that are underneath us. That, 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 that we are mom and dad too. That, that we oversee. And then we have so many thousands of churches. We have six Bible colleges worldwide. We train a young army, okay, to take the gospel to the unreached people groups. I'm not here to brag. I'm here to tell you now what happened. And then, and then I remember we, we flew down to Kenya. And we have heard there was a, a people group in the mountain areas between K Kenya and Uganda in the Mount Elgon. Uh, the, the Mount Elgon. It's called Mount Elgon. It's a big massive mountain. And, and we went up there to the Sabaoti. The Sabaoti had a Bible translation just being translated. Can you see this? The, the, the Wycliffe, it's a Bible translation organization. I think you know about them, some of you. They had just completed a Bible translation. But there were no churches in this culture. And we come in there and we walk from village to village and invite people that have never ever heard the name of Jesus. They don't know, the, they don't know anything about the cross. They, they don't know anything about a good God. They are worshiping the spirits, okay? Good spirits and evil spirits and the ancestor spirits. And we walked from village to village. And then we brought them together in a field. I'm going to tell this story short because I, wanna, I really want to give you what have, what have changed me and Maria and, and tens of thousands of young Europeans and people, okay? So... Yeah, I preached to them a full day. We pulled together people under a big tree where they used to gather. And I preached to them a full day. I had no experience whatsoever. I was 23, 24. And they sat in the sunshine listening. But when I came to the first evening, I felt they, they, they are not ready to receive because they have not yet fully understood the gospel. So I continued the next day, early in the morning. I continued. And they were sitting patiently listening. I was an angel sent to them. Yeah. They were just sitting there in the sunshine listening. At the second day in the afternoon, I felt I was ready to, to, uh, to ask them to pray a prayer of salvation with me. I brought them that far. And they all bowed their knees. They had no concept of bowing their knees. So I had to explain. That's what we do in reverence to the creator God. So they bowed their knees and we pray. The next day we were supposed to baptize people. Because I continued that night to teach baptism. You got to understand I had no clue how to do this. I just read the Gospels and the book of Acts. And they signed up. We had someone that took their names. And we had so many. Finally, we just gave up signing. So the third day, we met at the river. 
and here the miracle happened. There was a big snake in the river, a poisonous snake. So someone jumped down into the river ahead of me and started to kill the snake with a big stick. Got a little afraid. <laughs> they got the snake out and I tried to make jokes with the people. I said, isn't this a glorious day? Even the devil comes to be baptized. And you know, I tried to, <laughs> let's get down here. And, and I walked into the river and I started to baptize. And the first woman I baptized, when I, when I got her down into the water and she came out of the water, she came out of the water shaking and screaming at the top of her voice. And you got to understand that not even my interpreter here was a Pentecostal. All right. He was, a, he was from the Salvation Army. He didn't speak in tongues. He had no clue about what it is to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues. So I shout to him. What language is this? I don't know. I've never heard it. He says. And I think this must be the Holy Spirit. But I'm not sure. But the thing is that when she screams out. It sounds just like. When someone prays in, in, in the prayer tongues. And she walks the wrong direction in the river. She walks upstreams like this. And she's not stopping. So they have to run out to get hold of her. Because she's just gone. Can you see this? She's wasted. What do you say? Just go. Yeah. Yeah. So they get hold of her and carry her in. Carry her in to the to the to the river bank. Put her there. She's shaking and screaming. And now I understand now something is happening here. That is beyond, okay? That is beyond what a missionary can do, right? So then another woman comes out and when she steps out into the water to be baptized, the demons start to manifest. She screams like an animal and manly voices comes out of her mouth. I'd never been casting out demons. But I took control of it by, a, by an authority that was just there. So I, I bound that demon and I casted it out. And, and then I prayed the salvation prayer with her in the water. And then I baptized her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when she came out of the water, she was screaming as the other lady. In an unknown tongue. And she couldn't find her way out of the river. So they, 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 now there was something taking place that, every, that amazed everyone. And they, 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 they came. They came from all over. And we baptized 150 or something like that, 150, 160, that first baptism. And, and, and 75 or 80 of them we had to carry out of the river. And they have never ever heard a teaching about the Holy Spirit or baptism in the Holy Spirit. Are you getting that? Or manifestation. They, 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 they lay on the river bank screaming. So I gather them at the field and I try to now go into some follow-up ministry. And I it taught them about the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit and what it is to speak in tongues. But I felt help, how shall I say it? I felt um, I'm not getting anywhere. I, I have no experience. And then the Holy Spirit tells me, shut up. <laughs> so what do I do? And he said, just tell them to close their eyes and look up. So I told them all to stand up on their feet and close their eyes and look up. Because my master, the Holy Spirit, my king, the one that is in me, the one that brought me to them has told me this. And then I'm quiet. And then that thing happened that changed our lives. A wind came. I would say it was a breeze. I stood there first, I felt embarrassed because nothing was happening, but then I felt that wind from behind. And when it passed me, I started crying like a baby. It was the most powerful, wonderful power experience. I cried and I was, this is, this is now just the Holy Spirit. And then the first people that stood in front of me started crying just like me. And then more and more people started crying. And then they lifted up their hands. Can you see this? They are all closing that, but they are lifting up their hands. And then it is like a wave is coming upon them. And it 
sweep them off their feet, you know. And they are all laying there now in the grass, shaking, screaming in tongues. Like, um, like, the, like the most wild Pentecostal prayer meeting you've ever been to in your life, you know. And they, they, they have never been to a conference. They've never been to a church. This is the Holy Spirit's doing. And I'm standing there with goosebumps. Can you see this? Huh? Hair standing out all direction. I'm just standing there. And, and uh, that wind is blowing. And no one could, get it, got, it could, could come into contact with these people for hours. For hours they were screaming in tongues. And from that day, my friends, I was um, positively destroyed. All right? From that day, Johannes Amritzer was officially, uh, was officially an unreached people's missionary. From that day, there's nothing else that I want. Are you getting this now? Uh, if, you, if you, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to drive your sports car, you know. I'll, 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 I'll kick it to, to the ground, I promise you. I'll be happy to drive your fancy motorcycle, but you can't impress me. I've seen something that is beyond stuff. I've seen something, yeah, that has taken me. And I, am, I have this virus in me. I don't know how to explain this, but I came home from that place. We planted five new churches. We divided them in groups. We gave them my Bible study material, a simple Bible study material that I had produced at the age of 23, 24. We gave them that. That Bible study material is now translated into 40, 50 languages. And we've planted churches with that. And I've started to, uh, I started to write books. You've got to understand, I, I never even finished high school. I was drunk in the English classes. You can hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell you, we... This, is, this was the Holy Spirit's doing. And, and I want to, and when, if you want me to tell about the very heart of our ministry here tonight, this is what it is now. I came home from that place and I said to Maria, let's sell everything we own. Let's be backpackers for Jesus. And we started a, a, a series of years before we had the kids where we were doing nothing but going to another people group. We sold everything we had. We went after it. We, we went to another people group. And we started planting churches. We weren't waiting for people to support us. You know, I always laugh when I hear people say, I've got no one to support me. What are you talking about? You live in America. Huh? Something called eBay. <laughs> Sell stuff. Polish shoes. Do something. There's always, if there is a will, there is, you know, we will, there's a breakthrough. If there is a, a true, yeah, 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 okay. I will probably never come to this, but that's okay. I know we got a nice sermon there, but probably, I really want to tell you, are you getting this tonight? We were sold out for this. And we've been going ever since. And it's 22, it's the 22nd year now. And I became the daddy of a young movement. You say, Johannes, you're young. Yeah, but you see, when, as soon as you have a child, if you're 15 or 16, you're a mama, isn't it? It, it, it is the kids that determines the parents. If the kids are there, that's what it is. And if you ask me if I'm an apostolic man, I always say, well, I'm not an apostle to other people, but I'm an apostle to my own people. Getting it? It's, it's as simple as that. Can't be an apostle to you, but I can be an apostle to those that I've given birth to and, and, and are training and helping. So, you know, we started moving in this, moving in this. We came to the Turkish people. Let me just tell you a couple of stories before we pray. Is that okay? Have I preached too long? How many of you are, are willing to give me another 10 or 15 minutes? Is that okay tonight? Yeah? Is that okay? Really? Yeah? So, we came to the Turkish people. You know the Turkish, they, they are, it's 80 million Muslims. Yeah. A little piece of Turkey is in Europe, the rest is in Asia. You know what Turkey is? 
huh? the Mediterranean Sea and then down there to the east. And um, we went to the Turkish in South Bulgaria, old Macedonia, old biblical Macedonia. We went into a place driven by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's a long story, but I'll tell it short. And we started to pray for people. And I prayed for a boy that was deaf both ears and mute. His father came with him. His father cried and said this. Uh, he, they treat him like a clown. He was, I don't know, 14, 12 or 14, somewhere there. They treat him like a clown, but he's so smart. His father was not a Christian. But when we talk with signs, oh, I tell you, my brother, he's so smart. So his father started crying. He had hearing aids so on. So I wondered if, if he wanted me to pray for his ears. But he said, I got enough hearing. It's a practical answer, right? And then he says, but you could pray for my son. He, he's never been able to hear. He's never spoken. Pray for him. And I pray for his son. And God, I will make this long, long story short now. God opens up his ears. So he hears the, the, the slightest little sounds. He hears. And he starts to give, you know, sound. You know, when you never spoken. And he pointed at his mouth and he cried. He could hear his own voice. That became known in that area. And the Holy Spirit breaks out. The genuine stuff. You see, when I'm here to speak now, I'm here to say something about what has marked my life. And now I'm going to talk about holy things. They closed down the mosque in that area. They were not coming anymore. We baptized 5,900 people within one and a half year. We established, I don't know how many churches. They were coming. They were coming. We had a stadium packed with people. A soccer stadium and they left their wheelchairs and their canes. and the, Can you see this? <laughs> but I want to tell you the end of the story. This man had told me when I prayed for his boy that he would never ever have a job. He'd be a kid his whole life. And you know in South Europe, let me tell you, it's South European culture, if you don't have a job, you're not a man. If you don't own a little money, you're not a man. So his father cried, he said he will never become a man. And he said he will never be married in our culture either because he's multi-handicapped, so he will never be married. And he cried about that and he cried about it. He said, he, he, I, I cannot afford for him to go to handicapped schools. They are so expensive. He, this was in the, in the poorest ghettos of Eastern Europe. So he's illiterate and he will remain illiterate. Now I come back to the same area three years later after we've baptized all these people. In this area, you've got to understand in this area, I am treated a little bit like royalty because there was such a, a, a breakthrough. So I cannot walk through there, those slums and those ghettos, without people coming out offering me goats, you know, eggs, clothes. I love them. When I think about them, I love them so much. These Turkish ladies, you should meet them. They will, they will grab your chic like this. And then they will say, if you don't come back, I kill you. <laughs> and that's the way of saying, I love you, son. <laughs> but I was supposed to go to visit a friend whose name is Shaika. And I walked into one of these blockhouses in the slums. You, I know you got your ghettos here in America. This is a European, Eastern European ghetto. So you walk into this blockhouse and there is no electricity in the staircase and there are no windows where there's supposed to be windows and uh, you know and it smells and and I'm walking up there in the blockhouse and in the darkness someone grabs me around my shoulders and I'm thinking here we go again 
<laughs> he is my watch. He is my wallet. I say in the darkness. And then I always add, I'm a priest. Spare my life. And it has worked every time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't mean that, that we keep our stuff all the time, Peter, right? Huh? <laughs> Anyhow. There in the darkness, someone says to me, I don't want to rob you. And then he says, and my interpreter is next to me. It was a young Turkish girl that spoke many languages. She stands next to me in the darkness and, and she interprets, I don't want to rob you, but aren't you that holy man? I said, yes, I'm so holy you cannot touch me. <laughs> and then, no, but are you not that man that opened up my ears and made me able to speak? And I say, I don't know, we've had many missionaries here. We've been many people praying. But he brought me up to where there's supposed to be a window where there was just a hole. And then I saw this young man, well-dressed. Can you see him? Well, I really want to see him. Dressed up like for a party, you know. Well, well-dressed. So he says to me, let me tell you, I came to, to you with my daddy. And he speaks. And, 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 I, and I had never heard anything. I, could ne I couldn't speak. And you, and then I, I start to remember. It's you. And I say the forbidden things. Oh, you've become so big, you know. <laughs> and, we, and, we, and, and, I, and then when he speaks, I start to cry. He has learned to speak. He stutters a little bit, but he speaks. And he says, I, I've, I've been to the doctors. They've checked my hearing. I, I got 80% hearing. And it's that not the time when you say, why do you have 80? Do you get that? And I won't even ask Jesus one day when I come home. It's ridiculous. I mean, he had sip zero. Now he is having. I still believe that doctor's instrument must have been wrong. You know? <laughs> but now he tells me. I know how to read. I know how to write. I've been to school for three years. What you and me take for granted was a triumph for him. I know how to read. I know how to write. And then he continues and he says, I have a job. And then I cry because I come from South Europe where honor culture is deep, deep rooted. So I cry, I say, so you're a man now then, huh? And he puts his finger in here and he says, I'm a man now. There was just dignity written in his face. You know what dignity is when you've had and have dignity? I can tell you. We had no dignity. We have dignity. And then he says, today I'm getting married. Today? He was 17. He married very young. Yeah, and I'm on my way to my wedding now. Are you coming? <laughs> there was supposed to be a pastor's gathering up at Chaika's place. Well, what do you think I choose now? A wedding in the ghettos outside where they play the clarinet, okay? Or a pastor's gathering. I went to the wedding. <laughs> so now he tells me, he tells me, I've been praying for two weeks that God would send the holy man to be the honor guest at my wedding. And here you are. Thank you for, for have been listening to God. And I said, I've been more deaf than you've ever been. <laughs> I haven't heard anything. <laughs> but God fixed it. Are you happy sometimes that God fixes things? I mean, can we, can we talk about this? I mean, some of you, some of us, <laughs> if God wasn't fixing things. So I walk with him to the wedding. That night, I knew why I'm doing what I'm doing. He came up with his bride. I'm trying to make the story short. It's impossible almost. He came up with his bride and he said, you want to have the honor of dancing with her? This is South European. This is South European God. I'm a good dancer. Grandmama taught me to dance. We danced to the radio. But 
I said for the first time in my life, I'm too old to dance with you. She was so young, so innocent. But I will watch you dance. And I watched them dance. And I cried and I cried and I cried. You should have seen them dance. It's dirty block houses around. But 600 guests. And he's dancing like a man. He has a job. He can read. He can write. He can say to her, I'm going to provide for you. He can hear when she says, I love you. It was dignity. It was the gospel. It was the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? It was. And I was watching them. And I was saying to myself, if I, if I ever, if, if, I, if I never see anything like this again, you know, this is enough. Yeah. This is what we've seen. And I could continue and continue. We've heard them cry out there in the darkness. That demon-possessed guy, Peter, I, I have to finish with that guy. That demon-possessed guy behaving like an animal. They couldn't fetch him. They had to be five, six people holding him. But we ran out in that field. This was up in northern India. We ran out in that field and I chased him down. My father taught me when I was a kid, this is ghetto lessons. He taught me that if someone runs from you, you can always run up behind him and kick the feet under him. So I did. <laughs> and he fell out and I jumped on top of him. And then we casted the demons out. And then we sat on our knees there in the dust. And I led him to Jesus. Together with my interpreter. Oh, the Buddhists had tried to help him. They couldn't. The Muslim mullahs had tried to help him. They couldn't. The Hindu gurus had tried with their chantings, but they couldn't. Then Jesus comes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then the blood of Jesus comes. <laughs> and he's receiving Jesus and he's praying in tongues before we are off the ground. That man is a worship leader today. He's an evangelist today. He travels from village to village in Bihar and Yangkart in North India and preaches the gospel. He was an animal. Driven by demons. He's a prince in the kingdom of God. I was supposed to preach a, gospel, a message to you about kingdom authority. Uh, I'll take it in three minutes then we will pray. It says in Matthew's gospel chapter 24 verse 14. It says... For the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all ethnos, to all people groups, right? And then the end will come. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached, I, I want to give it to you the way I believe it is, the way I saw it as a young Christian. Um, you see, a church is not just a group of people singing worship songs or entertaining, entertaining children you see the church is not the place where we entertain your youth and your kids no the gospel of the kingdom is being preached and when we do so we build an embassy of the kingdom of God in that ethnos when the Holy Spirit came when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost it, it, the whole purpose of the Holy Spirit was to, that the gospel would be preached to all nations, isn't it? You see, speaking in tongues is not really about us charismatics having a good time. It is about us being empowered to, to go to the ethnoses. You see, a Christian life can never be experienced or fulfilled without going with a great commission to the ethnoses. And, and I want to say this today. How, how will I say this? You see... You can just stop it right there for a while. I, I really want to explain this now. If I drive through the gates of your embassy in Stockholm where I live. I live in Northern Europe in Stockholm. As soon as I'm through those gates, I'm not in Stockholm anymore even though I'm in Stockholm. I'm in America. Am I right? There are American laws. I can be shot 
shocked if I don't obey. Am I, am I telling you the truth? There are, and, 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 and if someone flees to that embassy and comes through these doors, it is a, a city of refuge, isn't it? It is a safe haven. Am I right? So when we preach the gospel, we erect an embassy. We build an embassy for the kingdom of God. I wanted to preach to you a little bit, but just a little bit, just giving you a taste. When we go out there, we don't just conduct festivals. We build embassies. We build churches with other rules, with another culture. Mm -hmm. a, a kingdom of God culture. Kingdom of God rules. And we are all ambassadors with authority. Yeah, you see, I, I would have loved to have a picture here showing you your ambassador in, 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 in Stockholm, but he's intouchable. Can't touch him. He's got your great nation behind him, right? He's an ambassador. And when Jesus said in the Great Commission that all authority has been given unto me, go ye therefore out, all authority means all authority. Huh? Yeah. Paul spoke about it in Philippians chapter 3 and he said our citizenship is in heaven and therefore we wait our Savior. I think I even got that scripture there. Anyhow, I really want to finish here now and I want to say we can go together to Tanga and build an embassy in a Muslim city. We will preach the gospel and we will turn on the light and we will erect an embassy and we will build a safe haven, a city of refuge. All right, stand up on your feet. I, I will move into to prayer. Uh, time is too short. You know what? I, I know I preached long. But if the Lord... If the Lord allows me, maybe I'll come back and I, I can, I can, but, but it was necessary tonight, I think, for you to, to get to know who is this fellow that speaks to you, huh? If I would have gone straight into teaching, it wouldn't have been good. I just touched it a little bit. But let's lift up our faces. Let's lift up our faces. There is this wind that the Holy Spirit wants to blow through this place tonight. This breeze. This breeze. The breeze that I experienced among the Sabaoti. The breeze that we have experienced when 10,000. Oh, when 10,000 people were, 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 were baptized in the Holy Spirit this last summer. There were 65 or 70,000 people standing there. But 10,000 of them wanted to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they all started screaming in tongues. Yeah, lift up your faces, lift up your hands. God wants you to get into this. I'm here so that you will be shareholders of the unreached people's missions. The Holy Spirit whispers in me, says, take them to your gold mine, Johannes. I'm not here for your dollars and cents. I'm here for you to be shareholders of the gold mine me and my wife found when we started going to the unreached people groups. That anointing and that power that springs up there, it's so, it is that virgin, virgin ground breakthrough power that comes upon. It is that book of Acts spirit that comes upon us. Let's lift up our hands right now because that spirit will come upon you tonight. Remember these few things. Present the gospel. I did that yesterday. Ah, look at me quick. Look at me quick. Don't say to me that America is different. I went to buy these shoes yesterday. And we presented the gospel to the girl that brought out the shoes. And the Holy Spirit touched her. And before we had wrapped the shoes, she had given her heart to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to preach the gospel. And when you preach the gospel, the power comes, right? And we erect an embassy 
We come with authority. Let's lift up our hands again. Let's have the worship team come up on stage. We are going to enter into this together right now. Let's lift up our voices. If you know how to pray in tongues or know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, do that. Yes, I know people will, will be shareholders in unreached people's missions. And I will make some invitations that are going to be very bold tonight. I feel in the Holy Ghost that I'm going to do something here that I need to do. But just lift up your hands, start to pray, pray. Shibari ala mahabari sakar dene hechakiya. Siprani ala mahar la handari ala mahar le hechakachikiya la fasara. Shimra mangres te kri ala par le hesme fi ala far le mishmit pi ala ka. Smadari ala mahar le mingre bishmit fi ala par le heste ki ala ta. Sigiri ala mar la mangar ba chikti ki ala par le heste ki ala ta ta ra. Shigiri ala mar la maham ba sikti ki ala par le heste ki jine korosata. Sigiri ala mamra mangar ba chikti ki ala par le heste ki jine sasi. You see, there's no in-between, says the Holy Spirit. You're either a missionary or a mission field. You're either a missionary or a mission field. There's, there, there are no in-betweens. The gospel cannot be experienced unless you preach it. Unless you unleash that power of the Spirit. Unless you get part of the Great Commission. Jesus called them out and he said, Now follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they followed him and they became fishers of man. They followed him and they started to heal the sick and cast out demons. They followed him and Jesus made these simple people, fishermen and tax collectors and soldiers. He made them warriors in his kingdom. He made them ambassadors in his kingdom. Tonight God is calling ambassadors. Kingdom of God ambassadors. Diplomats. Walking with kingdom authority. Presenting the gospel. Releasing the power. Using authority. Tonight that spirit of evangelism and that spirit of the supernatural, that spirit that comes right from the book of Acts, that spirit that comes, that jumps out of the pages of the book of Acts, that pioneering spirit, that spirit that goes to, to the Muslims, to the Hindus, that drives us to people that I've never heard, is coming upon people here tonight. I feel the Holy Spirit tells me to call out missionaries to call out people that wants to give their lives to present the gospel if that is in America or if that is to the ends of the earth if that is to the unreached in Pakistan or Afghanistan or if that is here in the ghettos or in the suburbs in the nice suburbs of America but you feel I need to go with the gospel I need to open up my mouth I need to speak that gospel clearly I haven't done that I've been shy you have to, you have to tell that gospel yeah. if you feel on the inside right now there's a hook thrown into you by the Holy Spirit to be one of those bold missionaries. Bold missionaries. You need to open up your mouth at your working place. Speak the gospel. And the power will be released. You need to open up the, the mouth there at your school. And speak the gospel. And the power will be released. You will go to the mission field. But you will be a missionary here, here at home. And you will be it out there. You will be it everywhere. I'm calling ambassadors right now. If you feel I've been too shy. I've been intimidated. I, I, I have not done this, but I need to step out and do this. Run up to the front right now. Just run up here. Stay here in the front. Because tonight, kingdom authority comes upon people. Come close, 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 close. Come, come. And lift up your hands. Kingdom authority. Kingdom authority. Lift up your hands. God is going to change you for the rest of your life. You'll never.
never be the same again. You'll be touched by that same virus that came into me. You'll be touched by that same anointing. But you will feel that same breeze, that same wind as I felt. You cannot, you cannot hold it anymore after this prayer. You will just open up your mouth at your working place. You will start to share the gospel. The cross, the blood, the resurrection, the love of Jesus, and the power of God is going to go up. And you will grab their hands and you will say, let us pray. And the Holy Spirit is going to come. There's this power for evangelism right now coming upon the church. You will grow. You will grow in the name of the Holy Spirit. Believe in the Holy Spirit. Believe in the Holy Spirit. You were baptized into God and into His Son, but now believe in the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands. Here it comes. Kingdom authority. Kingdom authority. I hear Jesus, He speaks. He steps out and He speaks and He says, I'm putting that garment around your shoulders now. You are my ambassador. Do you hear me? You are my ambassador. You carry my dominion, my authority. You work for an embassy. I see how people will go to the unreached people groups. This is not just, can I be bold now? This is not just, you see, any assembly of God church in America. Do you hear me? This is an apostolic center. And that's why I'm here tonight. Because Pastor Paul felt in his spirit something that, that he could relate to. There was something kindred there. There was something you could relate to. Lift up your hands. You will multiply. You will take authority. There will be churches planted. There will be missionaries sent. Young men and women will go to the Buddhists, to the Hindus, to the Muslims, to the animists. There's going to be a bomb exploding here tonight. Lift up your hands and receive it. Power to witness. Power to evangelize. Power to move in the Holy Spirit. Let's just sing a worship song together. And, and the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. I will come back and pray in just a moment. Show me your glory. Show me your love yeah. Show me your love yeah. Show me your love my God Show me your love Show me your love Paul 
Can I just be the one I am here for five, ten minutes now without, I can just go. I'm free to go. Listen, my dear friends, I really want to speak to you now. You see, I stand under authority when I'm in here. I'm under the authority of Pastor Paul and Pastor Kim here. I'm in this house as a guest. So that's why I'm asking. But there was something that came upon our youth in SOS. SOS is our ministry that came upon our youth 10, 10 years ago. They became fearless. They wanted to give their lives for the gospel. We were studying the legends of the apostles. You know that the only one that died a natural death was John. The, the other they died as marchers. Isn't it? And we read the legends and we were studying the legends of the early Christians and we were preaching early, early church history and we read about the church fathers and when I came to the, to the story of Andrew something happened Andrew he refused to be crucified like Jesus so he was crucified on an X they brought the cross together like this because he felt he wasn't worthy dying as his master and his savior Jesus and when they crucified him he he stayed alive long the legend tells us he was he was living three days hanging on that cross and his disciples came out to him to say goodbye to him and his you know those that he had led to the Lord but he didn't have time for them because he spoke to those that were unbelievers hanging there nailed hands and feet he said there was someone else that was nailed like this for you and people were kneeling down in the dust giving their lives to Jesus as they heard Andrew preach from the cross when I read that story and when I started to tell that story to our young a fearless bold spirit came upon our young and it released a church planting movement and I believe that spirit is going to come upon your church Pastor Paul that spirit where people couldn't care anymore if there is a sniper that wants to shoot me I'm ready to die I'm dying for Jesus if, if, if you put up stones to stone me, just throw your stone. When that, when that spirit comes upon a church, you multiply fast. I stood upon that rooftop of a little minibus preaching the gospel to Muslims in Ethiopia. And a stone came. Bang! Hit my interpreter in the chest. Big stone. And then they continued to hurl stones. They were passing. And I took down my mic. I said, should we run? What shall we do? And they started shouting, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. The Muslim young, they started throwing stones. We were surrounded by them. There were thousands. And we were standing on this top, this, this mini bus with our little loudspeakers. And then my Ethiopian friend looks at me with tears in his eyes and he says, you can run if you want, but this is a good place to die for Jesus. And when he said that, something came over me. I got his hands and I said, you are so right. And he said, they can cover us with all the rocks of Ethiopia. But I'm not getting down here now. I'm going to preach the gospel. And when he said that, that spirit came upon the both of us. And we prayed together. Stones were coming and we prayed together. And then we took up the mics again. And now there was an authority. 
there was something new in our voices. They dropped the stones. The old people started to calm down the young. And we preached the gospel. And 15 minutes later, 300 Muslims gave their lives to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. That fearless spirit will come upon you as a church. I'm prophesying. It's going to be a breakout among the young. There will be a breakout in this church. There will be like a, like a thing coming, a fearless spirit. And they will take over the schoolyards. Are you getting this? They will stand up and preach in buses. They cannot be stopped. You will stand up in your working place. You will do it with passion. You will do it with charm. Are you here? You will do it so that you win people. You will do it so that you will become loved. Hallelujah. This, this can happen. Let's lift up your hands because I want to release this, this fearless spirit for the gospel. This is what I want to release right now. This fearless spirit. When, and when I've done that, I think I'm done here tonight because then you will go out and do it. You will cast out demons, heal the sick and move in the power and have people baptized in the Holy Spirit and have people saved. So just lift up your hands and receive this wind that comes now. And you say, Father, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes, if they want to laugh, they can laugh. If they want to hurl insults at me, let them do it. You just say that to Jesus now. If they, I'm ready. If there are rocks, if there are bullets, I'm ready. Now lift up your hands because the Holy Spirit will come and kiss you and you will become like those first disciples that walked into Colosseum singing songs as they let the bears and the lions loose on them. They were singing worship songs to Jesus as they were ripped apart. They had tasted Jesus and the miraculous and his power. They weren't living for stuff. They were Christians. They were real Christians. They weren't after the latest equipment or the latest this and that. They were not just, just hip and cool. They were Christians. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's lift up our hands because here comes this spirit. This true Christianity. This fearless anointing. You will become a bold witness. Yeah, you see the first Christians, they said they had to be baptized with three baptisms. The water baptism, the fire baptisms, and the blood baptism. Now let's lift up our hands. Let's lift up our hands. Father, I pray right now that that book of Acts spirit, that fearless spirit, that spirit that comes from your own heart, that comes from where the curtain was torn from top to bottom. That Holy Spirit that blew through the book of Acts. That Holy Spirit that met me when I stood among that unreached tribe. That breeze that came upon me. That Spirit that has been upon us when we have preached in Pakistan. When we have preached among the Muslims in India. Father, that spirit that has been upon us. Now it comes upon you. Lift up your hands. I can feel it descending. Comes upon your hands. It comes upon your face. Enters into you and you feel real, real joy. Supernatural joy. Yeah. Yes. I have to say this. I have to prophesy this. Listen. Me, I believe in freedom of religion. Is there someone else in here that does that that, that believes in freedom of religion? You believe you believe in freedom of religion. You see, I don't have a problem with the Muslims building mosques in our nation. What I have a problem with is that we aren't building more churches. I believe in freedom of religion. What I have a problem with is that we aren't building churches in Saudi Arabia 
and Pakistan and Iran. That's what I have a problem with. We shouldn't fear the Muslims. We should start to plant churches like crazy instead. We should be fearless Christians evangelizing with fire and boldness instead. We shouldn't meet with demonstrations. We should meet with a fire demonstration of the gospel. We should preach the gospel. We should heal the sick. Let's lift up our hands in here. Father, I believe that this great nation, America, will send out missionaries like crazy. I pray that there will be a second mission wave coming out of this nation. And I pray that there will be a church planting wave going from coast to coast in America. And I pray that you will raise up a fearless generation. A fearless, powerful book of Acts. Christianity. Now let's lift up our hands and pray in tongues at the top of our voices. Can we do that for a while? Let's scream out to God. She a la mala curia la mas na fe, visitations huh? all around your church everywhere let's believe that there's going to be Jesus revelations people will dream about Jesus your relatives will dream about Jesus you will have a sister standing in a kitchen and there will be an angel talking to her let's believe huh? let's believe that the kids that have run away from the gospel they will meet the power of the Holy Spirit let there be no boring church. Let there be a book of Acts church, huh? Let there be a fire burning. Hallelujah. Let there be a bold, sacrificing mentality. Ah. Oh. They ask me sometimes, is it dangerous to go on your mission trips? Of course it is. Don't go if you're not ready to give your life. 
course it is. And the more I say it's dangerous, the more they flock to go. You see, I wonder sometimes why the Muslims are bolder than the Christians nowadays. There's something wrong there. Don't you agree with me? They go and blow themselves up being terrorists for their God. And they don't even know if they go to heaven or not. They say, Inshallah, only God knows. We have a certainty. We know. We love Jesus. We have a love gospel. A gospel of forgiveness and love and a second chance, isn't it? And a restoration to all mankind. Isn't that beautiful and wonderful? Why aren't we more radical? Why aren't we running? And as I've been going in America, meeting the Americans, I say like this everywhere, we need our allies again. We see European youth out there and Australian youth, but very few young Americans. You need to release a second wave of young American missionaries to go to the unreached people groups. Don't let the convenience destroy. Are you here? Don't let the, the, you see, the laziness that can come by having everything. You see, when a young man or woman has discovered what it is to see blind eyes opened and deaf to hear, they won't be dreaming about the nicest motorcycle anymore. They want to see another blind eyes open. Tell him. It's, it's just what it is. They've gotten a taste. I'm so thankful that I got to come to you. You can't do everything in one night. I was very happy I could come to you and speak with you. And um, I want to say from the bottom of my heart that I respect your pastor, even though this is the first time I meet him. I respect his spirit so much. Inviting a man that he doesn't know, just because he trusts something he feels in his spirit, giving him the mic saying do whatever you want to do this is a very bold man man of faith and uh, I'm very very happy I could stop by yeah. thank you Pastor Paul thank you Pastor Kim for allowing me to come and speak to you beautiful people thank you Wow. Well, I'm totally messed up right now. And uh, so it's going to take me a while to get through all this. But that was so awesome. I'm so touched. I'm so challenged. I'm so blessed. I'm so encouraged. know Johannes you just said so many things that's my heart tonight so many things him and I we only were together like 15 minutes before church started I met him 15 minutes ago it's not like I've been telling him it's uh, all I can say is let's get let's get on with it let's go in a city and then a nation and then the nations amen we can do this together. 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 Um, if you're interested in being part of the, the, the missions trip that Johannes has been talking about tonight, we're going to be meeting in the uh, multi-purpose room. Just get there as quickly as you can. It's, it'll be about a 30-minute meeting or so. We're going to get through it as quickly as possible, try to answer all your questions. So if you're interested in going with us to, to uh, Tonga, Tanzania, uh, go, go to the multi-purpose ring right now, all right? And Peter's going to be there, and he'll, he'll get things rolling. And uh, success to you. Success to the king and his kingdom. God bless you.